I'm gonna be honest, guys. I was thinking about skipping that one because I didn't like the show. Uh, for me, the show was less than mid. But let's just jump into it and tell you why I think it was less than mid. The show started with AR Fox vs. Swerve Strickland, which theoretically is a storyline based matchup. But AR Fox came out of nowhere. I don't know what is happening with this man. One week he's involved into a match that's only happening just because it's in, in his hometown. Next week he's going into a match for a storyline that should have happened months ago when he was kicked out of the Mogul Embassy. I have nothing against AR Fox or Sword Strickland. It just that match doesn't make any sense right now. I don't even remember who won. Swerve Strickland, AR Fox. Honestly, it doesn't matter who won. AR Fox came out and he was defending Adam Page. But why? How is he related to that storyline now? Is he just mad at Swerve that he ditched him? Next, the Kingdom's Squash Match. AW are kings of the squash matches. On Dynamite, I think there were three. On Rampage, there were a couple. Last week, we also had two, three matches per show that were squash matches. King of the squash matches. Not that WWE is not making squash matches, stop comparing them everyone. But I'm saying that squash matches do not cut it for me. The Kingdom, I know that the Kingdom are good. And why do we keep giving them squash matches if they're good? Huh? After that, a serious match. But that match doesn't make any sense for me. Darby Allen versus Lance Archer. Why all of a sudden Lance Archer decided to attack Darby Allen? Maybe there is a story that I don't know. Maybe Darby Allen injured a Lance Archer and that's why we haven't seen Lance Archer in, in so much time. Yeah, I don't know. All of a sudden Lance Archer decided to attack Darby Allen and Darby Allen won his match. Keep that in mind. Won his match against Lance Archer by surprise roll up and Jake Snake Roberts comes out and he is like, Darby. I know you beat Lance, but you're not gonna escape. And two other guys came out and he and they wanted to attack Darby, but Lance Archer attacked Darby. And all of a sudden, Darby is fighting with all the Christian Cage's minions, plus Jake Snape Roberts and Lance Archer. What's going on? What is going on here? Well, well, well what is this? Well, maybe I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go back after after I film this, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna see if actually this was the story. If actually the story was how Darby Allen injured Lance Archer, because otherwise it doesn't make any sense. It's driving me crazy. It doesn't make any sense. And even if it is the case, AW, I know you're watching my videos. Please include packages of how Darby did this. Otherwise, the story is not complete. After that, the acclaim celebrated their 69th day and honestly last week when i was talking about this i was thinking that this would be the lamest thing possible on earth but this was one of the best bits of the show it was really nice i really think it's a little bit over the top that whole 69 thing and the acclaimed and scissoring and all that stuff it's not up to my taste but it was nice, it was nice. Even MJF had a video package that he was saying thank you to Max Caster that uh, he put his body on the line for him and he was like, happy 69th day, yay Caesar. <laughs> it was such a funny segment. And after that, after that, the bizarre thing, out of nowhere comes Dalton Castle and we are having a trios match. Dalton Castle at the boys versus the acclaimed. Of course, acclaimed won, but I thought we were just gonna have a celebration and that's it. I didn't want a match that makes no sense. I thought that Dalton Castle wants to improve, that wants to be better. It's not gonna happen if he's having a last second match without build up, that's not showcasing any of his skill. 
Anyway, the Sex Stallions versus Mark Briscoe, Dustin Rhodes and Keith Lee. As long as I understand, Kip Sabian is having a problem with Mark Briscoe and this trio's tag match is solving the problem. How? Willow Nightingale versus Emi Sakura. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I skipped that one. Because the last two matches that I have seen from Emi Sakura, I'm not impressed. Not that she needs to impress me, I'm no one. I'm literally no one. And also, Willow Nightingale, sorry that I skipped your match next time. I I just, I don't know. It, it, didn't, it didn't cut it for me. Next time, I'm, give, I'm gonna give both these ladies a chance. But you see, you see the streak? Five matches in a row that are like scuffed and you start skipping matches because you, you're you like, what am I watching, man? What am I watching? What is that build-up? What is that story? None. The main event. Don't worry, there is a hope here. FTR and LFI versus Big Bill, Ricky Starks and Gates of Agony. Basically, 4v4 match. That by itself doesn't make any sense. The only sense it makes is that last week LFI came back to help FTR, but on the last night show, it turned out that LFI do not like FTR, they don't even want to shake FTR's hand. FTR's match against Big Bill and Ricky Starks makes sense because they want to get their title back. Why is Gates of Agony there? Uh, is it because Ricky Starks is friend with Swerve? My, my head hurts. Anyway, in the end, FTR and LFI won and as I said LFI didn't want to celebrate with FTR the victory but the cool thing that's leveling up the score call me bias call me a fangirl call me everything but House of Black had a nice ass video package that basically they're saying that they're targeting FTR Everything went to black, House of Black were in the ring, they attacked FTR, and this is how the show ended. No, someone else came out to help FTR. Shit, why do I not remember? This level up the score, right? And now we are bringing it back down, because who helped FTR from the House of Black? Blackpool Combat Club. Why? Give me some context, the AW. Give me some context, AW. Why Blackpool Combat Club is helping FTR against House of Black? Why? Why? Why is that? Anyway, a lot of frustration. I'm not really frustrated. I, I just have a lot of question marks in my head, and the commentary is not helpful at all. It, it, the commentary is like Lance Archer smash Darby Allen. Lance Archer doing the the obvious things instead of saying like uh, Lance Archer is mad at Darby because he Darby injured him and etc but anyway was it a good show maybe if someone tells me in the comments more about the story maybe it was a good show for me it didn't make any sense and so if I was rating a W collision I would have rated 3 out of 10, mainly because of the House of Black and Darby Allen thing. Call me biased, call me a fangirl, but all the other stuff doesn't make any sense. I'm even giving points to Darby even though I assume that this is a story. Not pr Probably this is even not the story. But anyway, sometimes I need to say the bad things as well. Like I was thinking about skipping that video not making it because I don't want to say bad stuff about anything. I don't want the WWE fans to see this video and be like, this guy hates AEW, I like him. Or the AEW fans to be like, AEW is great, what are you talking about? I don't hate or like anyone. I'm just trying to see everything from all of the perspectives possible. And when something is shit, it's shit. And I'm calling it down in the middle. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next one which is probably Raw.